leverage do you normally apply? Well, of course, it's a question of uh, uh, what the rules in the spread betting firm's uh, books are as regards margin. That's one factor. I myself don't particularly mind. I mean, it wouldn't bother me whether the margin was set at zero. Although I can tell you, it would certainly bother me if it was set at 50%. Uh, the fact is that uh, one just must bear in mind that results can be adverse, and therefore one shouldn't go beyond the point where one's sense of judgment is adversely affected. Uh, so really, although uh, currencies, for instance, uh, are dealt in uh, margin rates of the order of a percent or something like that, I don't trade currencies very often, uh, one should bear in mind that currencies can move very quickly. And if you doubt that, just look at what happened as between the Swiss franc euro rate a month or two back. Now that gave everyone a terrific surprise and uh, I think one must bear in mind as a trader that the indication of the risks uh, assumed from the margin rate is not reliable. One must look at these things independently of oneself. Well, you just said there, you know, you, you trade Forex occasionally. What, 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 would, what would motivate you to think, I want to get into, wake up on a Monday and think I'm going to do Forex? Or what are the signs that make you think, actually, I might have a look at this? Well, it's a question of timing. For instance, I have taken the view that the Eurozone is a stupid idea and a deceitful idea. And it's reasonable to say that sooner or later, the euro as a currency will fall into desuetude, possibly very quickly. I don't know. But as to when it does, I'm rather less sure. And I really don't know. I just have the sense that uh, people are being unduly optimistic for the eurozone. And that seems to me to be a moment to sell Eurozone short. Uh, and uh, that, by and large, has been quite a profitable policy this last year or two. Mind you, there was a long period when it wasn't. So you've got to be a little bit cautious. Mm, okay. Um, so just talk a bit about your, your stake size. You know, what's typical for you? Well, I, I'm 68 years old now, and so my idea of what is wise is uh, not what it was 15 years ago. Uh, I, I am conscious at 68, I can't build up a business from scratch. Again, I just, it's just not practical. Uh, and yet, one does wake up some mornings and think, oh yes, we'll have a go at that. So I don't absolutely rule out starting off all again, or starting off all over again, but I think I prefer not to. And the way to avoid that trouble is to moderate one's stakes. And I, I think, I mean, I'm quite happy to open up a position which is, say, a gross value of 100,000, a quarter of a million, or something like that. But I'd be much more cautious about it uh, if the uh, stocks in question seem to me naturally volatile, for instance, high debt or high changes in perception of prospects, then I'd be more cautious. Okay. Um, and how commonly are you taking big short positions? <laughs> I really, I suppose on average, take what some would regard as a fairly large position uh, twice a year, I should think, now. Uh, by and large, if you keep looking for the next big thing, uh, you, will, you will regret that, and furthermore, uh, you may find the next big thing is your f next big disaster. Certainly, I am told that uh, the rule at Goldman Sachs is that when a chap has uh, made a really large profit uh, for Goldman Sachs, he is understandably infused with adrenaline. And the rule in Goldman Sachs is that you should go for a walk around the block, not for several days, but several weeks, 
until the addiction to the adrenaline rush uh, is diffused by time. I, of course, have no such happy boss imposing such a result. I just have to accept that that's done uh, on the basis of common sense.